When a person who studies mathematics talks about trigonometric functions, they talk about the three, sine, cosine, and tangent. But these are only part of what we have out there. There are three other trig functions. We've referred to them as the reciprocal functions. Now, the reciprocal trigonometric functions are as follows. We have secant, cosecant, and cotangent. Now, secant is abbreviated SEC. Cosecant is CSC. And cotangent is COT. So we would be taking the secant of an angle theta, the cosecant of an angle theta, and the cotangent of an angle theta. Now, the reason that these are referred to as the reciprocal functions is because each one is the reciprocal of one of our main ones. Secant of theta is actually equal to 1 divided by the cosine of theta. Cosecant of theta is 1 divided by the sine of theta. And cotangent of theta is 1 divided by the tangent of theta. So if we can find these other values, then we just take the reciprocal of them. And this is going to be coming in handy, having that little bit of knowledge, as we work through things. Now, also something else to bear in mind, cosine is typically the, or is the x value on the unit circle. So this is going to be 1 divided by x. Sine is the y value. So cosecant is 1 divided by y. And tangent is normally y divided by x. So cotangent will be x divided by y. And we can use these different pieces to talk about and work through different values. We're going to work through them as exact values and as decimal approximations. So first let's figure out how to do this for exact values. We're going to use the unit circle to evaluate these different locations on our graph or on our uh, trigonometric scales. So the cotangent of negative 5 pi fourths, well first we need to find that. Negative means we're going clockwise around the circle. 2, 3, 4, 5 pi fourths is going to be located here. Cotangent, as I was just saying, is 1 divided by tangent, or it is x divided by y. Well, at that location of negative 5 fourths for theta, tangent and co or sine and cosine, or x and y, are basically the same values. One's negative, one's positive. So anytime you divide something by itself, you get 1. If one of them is negative, we come out with a negative 1. Now, for cosecant. Remember, cosecant of pi thirds is going to be the same as 1 divided by the sine of pi thirds or 1 divided by the y value at that location. So let's find pi thirds. Pi thirds is right here at the 60 degree mark. Our y value is 3 uh, square root of 3 over 2. So we're going to have 1 divided by square root of 3 over 2. Anytime we divide by a fraction, we multiply by its reciprocal. So we have 2 divided by square root of 3. Not wanting to have a radical in the denominator, we'll end up with 2 radical 3 over 3 as the exact value for the cosecant of pi thirds. Now secant of 3 pi is going to be equal to 1 divided by the cosine of 3 pi. So where is 3 pi located at? This is also 1 divided by x at that location. Where is 3 pi located at? Well, starting and moving in standard fashion, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi is going to be on the negative x-axis. So we have 
1 divided by a negative 1, because that's the x value at that location, which is simply a negative 1. So using just the unit circle, we can calculate exact values. But it's also helpful to be able to do this on a calculator. So we're going to use the radian mode on our calculator to approximate the values of the following expressions. We're going to round our answers all to the nearest thousandth. So let's take a look at how to do this. The cotangent of 13 is simply going to be 1 divided by the tangent of 13. This is a little bit over 2 pi, but 1 divided by the tangent of 13 calculates out to be approximately 2 and 160 thousandths. Secant of 3 pi halves will be 1 over the cosine of 3 pi halves. And when we enter that into our calculator, we come out with an error. That is because at 3 pi halves, cosine is 0, so this is undefined. There would be an asymptote at that location if we were thinking about this graphically. Now, for cosecant of 6 and a half, this is going to be 1 over the sine of that same value, and 1 divided by the sine of 6.5 or 6.5 rounded to the nearest thousandth is 4 and 649 thousandths. Next, now that we have a little bit of a rhythm, the cotangent of 5 is 1 over the tangent of 5, which is a negative 0 and 296 thousandths. The secant of pi twelfths is 1 over the cotangent, or the cosine of pi twelfths, which to the nearest thousandth is 1 and 35 thousandths. Then the cosecant of pi thirds will be 1 over the sine of pi thirds, which is one that we could do for an exact value, but using the calculator as directed gives us a value of 1 and 155 thousandths. So we're able to work back and forth both directions on this, both with exact values and decimal approximations. One other thing that we have to look at when we're thinking about the reciprocal trig functions is the graphs. And to do these graphs, we're going to build off of the basic graphs that we've had in the past. So pictured in the first location is starting at 0, returning to 0. This is y equals the sine of x. Now, if we want to look at how this would be for its reciprocal, that is y equals the cosecant of x, any place that we have a number, we're going to take its reciprocal. Well, the reciprocal of 1 is 1, and negative 1 would give us negative 1. The reciprocal of 0 would be 1 divided by 0, and that is an undefined value. So every place that this graph crosses 0, we're going to have an asymptote. Then we're going to move away from the other graph. So if we're at 0, we're going to start very high at our asymptote, come down, touch, and then move back up. Then resume on the bottom side, come up, touch, and go back down for our other asymptote. Next, let's do the same thing for our cosine function. So here we have y equals the cosine of x. And we're going to build the concept here in the exact same manner. If we start, our ones will still be ones, positive or negative. Our zeros become asymptotes, and the graph of y equals the secant of x 
will move from those ones to the asymptotes in such a manner. Lastly, we're going to take a look at the cotangent. So we're going to start out with y equals the tangent of x. And we're going to move into y equals the cotangent of x. Now again, where we have values of 1, those will still be 1, positive or negative. Where we have zeros currently for tangent, those become our asymptotes. And where we had asymptotes on tangent, those will become our zeros. So we end up with a function that looks like this. So we can start with our basic three, sine, cosine, and tangent, and from those, either numerically or graphically, build out our reciprocal trig functions, cosecant, secant, and cotangent.